Hey guys, it's Ryan with Mom on Mission. If you are new here, I'm a Christ-following wife and a book-loving homeschool mom to three boys. So stick around, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to see all things biblical womanhood, book, and homeschool related. So I have gotten several requests um, for a Wordly Wise flip through. Um, and so I'm going to kind of give that to you today. Um, it won't be as much of a flip through as kind of just a shuffle through because we um, use the crate method for our paperwork. Um, as you may have seen, I'm doing a video on that. I don't know if it's up yet or not, but if it is, I'll link it up above. Um, and so all of my workbooks are torn apart. Um, but I will show you what I can and kind of show you how we go about using Wordly Wise. Um, so this is our third year using it. We used it um, for my fourth grader. We used it his second grade, third grade, and now fourth grade year. And then my second grader has used it for kindergarten, first, and second grade. Now, if you are looking at this um, vocabulary program for a kindergarten or first grader, what I'm going to show you today won't really apply. The first grade and kindergarten um, sets look a lot different. They're set up completely different. Um, and so this is not what it will look like at all. So um, maybe find another video for that. Okay, so there are three parts to the Wordly Wise curriculum. There is the student workbook, which like I said, ours are all ripped up. So just here's some pages from them. Um, then there is the answer key that gives you the answers to all of the um, student workbook problems and then there is the pink text or test booklet um, and so I don't believe there's much of a teacher's guide I have never used one for this I've used one for the kindergarten first grade but never for this um, and I was just looking online today I'm like is there even one is that a thing because um, there's several programs that I don't use the teacher's guide on because I just don't how we typically use this is each lesson takes us two weeks and there are there are 15 lessons so it takes us about 30 weeks to get through all of our vocab um, which is very doable so how we typically do it is on and we also do it four days a week so basically we break this up into eight chunks so on day one whatever day that lands on um, for the first week I just make them go through and read all of their words and definitions and this is right in the student workbook um, it has the words definitions uses them in a sentence and so the first day that's what we do and I think fourth grade has 15 words and I think second grade has 10 words don't quote me on that but I think that's right um, and so that's all they have to do on day one is just familiarize themselves with the words then on day two I have them go through and do exercise a so you'll see right here it says 4A. And these are not always exactly the same from week to week. They're similar, but they change it up a little bit so it doesn't get super repetitive. So this one is a complete the sentence. Circle each answer choice that correctly completes the sentence. Each question has three correct answers. So you see here um, the ape. Oh wait, this is my second graders, by the way. I thought this was my fourth graders. I'm like, why is ape on there? This is my second graders. So um, the ape is an animal that lives in the rainforest. The ape at the zoo was the first born to the two gorillas. The ape does not use a tail for balance, unlike a monkey. The ape has a long trunk that, uses, that it uses to drink water. So obviously you would circle all of them except for the last one. Um, and so then I will show you Kind of what exercise A on a fourth grade level might look like. So here's his worksheets from the student workbook. Okay, so his exercise A, using words in context, read the following sentences. If the word in bold is used correctly, write C. If it's incorrect, write I. So you can kind of see paralysis can make you need a wheelchair. So correct or incorrect. You can draw a paralysis with just four straight lines. Correct or incorrect. Okay, so then on day three of the week, I make them move on to exercise B. So for fourth grade, 
that may look like, again, they change, but may look like this. Uh, making connections, circle the letter next to the correct answer. There may be more than one correct answer. So which word or words go with care deeply? Astound, recite, cherish, approach. So obviously cherish would be your answer there. Um, for second grade, that might look like making connections, circle, let the letter next to the correct answer, which word goes with cave, chimney, cavern, motor, or brain. And what I like is it pulls in some of the previous vocabulary words. So this week we worked on the word motor in second grade, and that's one of his choices for this um, next week's assignment. So they kind of keep bringing back those old words. Okay, so we did exercise, or we read through the words first day, Exercise A the second day, exercise B the third day, exercise C would be on the fourth day. So for fourth grade, it might be determining meanings. Circle the letter next to each answer choice that correctly completes the sentence. There may be more than one correct answer. So I want to respond A to someone or to something you said the other day, B to a column in yesterday's paper, C the money you lent me back in June or D, but I can't think of what to say. So obviously there are three correct answers there. And then for second grade, exercise C may look like this, using context clues. Circle the letter next to the word that correctly com completes the sentence. Light the blank and hold it up so we can see in the dark. So. Light the cushion, light the motor, light the torch, or light the spear. Again, some of those words are recycled from previous lessons, which I really like. So then that would be all we did for the first week. So then on the second week, um, the first day, they would do exercise D, both of them. So this is in vocabulary in context. So this is second grade. So there's a little section to read. Um, and then continues on to the back, good chunk to read. So if your child isn't a super great reader, um, they may need some help there. But then they have a big old list of questions that have to do with the vocab words that they saw in that um, excerpt that they read. Now, I cheat on this a little bit. This is where I talk about all the time, I tweak things. This is a place where I tweak things. This says answer each of the questions with a sentence. I don't make my second grader do this. Um, however, I do make him read it and then I ask him the questions verbally and we have a discussion about it. Um, I We do a lot of handwriting throughout the day and I don't feel like he needs to do more with vocabulary. So I don't make him because it makes him very tired and grumpy if he has to do um, a ton of handwriting. So we just don't do it that way. So exercise D for my fourth grader for that second day of the second week may look like this. Complete the sentences to demonstrate your knowledge of the words in bold. So this they get to be a little creative when he sees this one. So if someone imposes on me, I might feel, and then he puts how he would feel if he was imposed upon. Um, and so that you kind of get to see um, that they're really understanding the word because they're having to take that word and make their own thoughts um, with it and get creative with that. So I do like that aspect. Now then on, I'm sorry, that was day one of, of week two. So then on day two, things kind of go a little different because in, um, let's see, my second graders, that, in my second graders, that next, um, section is the extension and so it looks like this now this I also kind of cheat on because it is kind of more for a classroom setting how it is written so they usually have a word here and I believe it's a word that's already in their list if I'm not mistaken yes so this is already one of his vocab words so they just write it again um, to remind you what that means and then phrasal verbs. So this shows you branch can mean branch off, or it can mean, um, you know, so that's a different way that you can use the word branch. 
and then there's a discussion and a writing prompt. So here's where it says, um, or here's where it seems like it's more for a classroom setting. It says a big road can have smaller tree branches. Or <laughs> a big road can have smaller streets branching from it. Can you think of something else that has small things branching off from it? And then they say, turn and talk to your partner or group. Use this space to take notes or write down ideas. Um, and then write one to three sentences, um, you know, explaining or talking about something that can also have stuff branching off of it. Again, the whole writing thing, I don't make him um, do much. We just discuss it, he and I, um, instead of with a group. And then I do the writing for him, but I make him come up with the original thoughts. I just put them to paper for him and talk through them with him. Um, again, that's just simply, he gets handwriting exhaustion really easily. And we do a ton of handwriting um, throughout the week already. So we just don't do it here. And then, so that was his day two of week two. My fourth graders day two of week two is exercise E, which is a lot like, well, pretty much just like my second graders exercise D. So it is a section to read. Continues on the back page. And then there are 10, no, 15 questions um, that have to do with vocabulary words that he saw in there. And some of them are not about a vocabulary word, but they want you to use a vocabulary word to answer the question. So again, even though he's in fourth grade, I typically don't make him do that writing either. He just much prefers to do it verbally, and I'm fine with that for vocab. So then that brings us to day three of week two, and that is when my fourth grader will do his extension. And again, same thing, I do make him write on that one because it's not much, it's two to four sentences, I think is what they ask. So like this one, expose is the word that they're talking about. Um, they talk about context clues, antonyms and synonyms. Um, and then it says, if you're going to the park and will be exposed to the sun, how could you protect your skin? So again, we don't do the whole jot down ideas with the partner or whatever. Um, but then I do make him, if he needs to talk to me about it, we'll discuss it. If not, I just make him write two to four sentences about that. Super easy. So then that brings us to, oh no, that's still day three. My second grader on day three, um, he doesn't have anything else after that. So I just let him use that as a review day. I just make him go through, reread the words and definitions, make sure he has those solid in his mind because on day four, they will both take a test. So my, um, actually both of them now take these tests independently because it's set up like, let me see if I can find the test for the same week. Um, it's kind of a fill in the bubble type test. However, because I want to reuse these books, I just make them do it in their language arts notebook. It's just a spiral notebook where they can write down these answers. Um, so to attend a meeting is to A, lead it, B, go to it, C, plan it, or D, end it. And so he would just read that and then write down A, B, C, or D on his paper. Um, and that was for my fourth grader, but my second graders looks just the same just not as many questions and obviously different words. Um, so dad has bought a dozen eggs. He bought A, two eggs, B, four eggs, C, six eggs, or D, 12 eggs. So again, they do these independently and I grade them when they are done. Um, and the answers are always in the back of the book. So I don't even know if they know that, but I do make sure I'm watching to make sure that they don't find that out during a test. <laughs> I don't expect them to do that anytime soon, but you know. Um, and then every once in a while, they will have a, if I can find one, a cumulative test. Okay, well, news to me. In book four, you have actually a midterm test so there's a section to read and then you go through and answer questions. In second grade, they call it the cum cumulative test and it's the same thing. There's a section to read and then you answer questions. So those are scattered throughout 
um, and we just kind of squeeze those in wherever we need to. So that is by and large how we use it. Again, there is the answer key so that each um, worksheet that they do, I can grade rather quickly. Sometimes there are um, crosswords that they need to do. The crossword answers are in here. Um, however, I did make a boo-boo this year and this is the wrong edition of book four. Some of it is the same and so it helps me sometimes, but then sometimes I'm like, what in the world are they talking about? And it's because they've updated some things and I don't have the updated answer key. I will probably eventually get it just because it makes things a little easier. But as of right now, when I find that happening, I just grade it. Like I can do fourth grade vocabulary, so it's all right. Um, so that's how we use Worthy Wise. We like it, it's simple, it's to the point. It is worksheet heavy, but my boys don't seem to mind it because they can do it on their own and it doesn't take them a long time. So, and I do see their vocab um, growing with this. So that's the whole point, right? I thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see any other flip throughs or have any questions about this, let me know down below um, and make sure you subscribe and I will talk to you next time. Bye.